Welcome to the History Hunter. Welcome to our small adventures with the World War II time frame. In this forest and around, there are some very special hidden secrets. If you want to find out what it is, well, join us and let's go out and find the path together right now. So, me, History Hunter, and my son. Eagle Eyes. We are out on an epic road trip on the Eastern Front, covering a lot of World War II history but also finding some incredible locations where the Red Army came. They were first the Red Army, and then they transferred themselves to USSR, the Soviets, and there's a lot of Cold War artifacts and locations that we're looking into, and that is pretty exciting. And in this forest, they hid away some of the most secret stuff, bunkers, but also they had a huge airfield here, and that was very important for them because in that way, when they were deep into Germany, they could reach any cities with their nukes. And this airport was a little place for them to have transporters and carry stuff all over Europe. The airfield itself, or the airstrip, is over there. But in this forest, they created some very, very unique bunkers. And that's what we're looking for. And these bunkers were merely shelters for the crews in the region. But as you're going to see for la later in this video, there are some spectacular features close to the runways. That is a very, very special shelter that the Soviets put right here. And the difference between these shelters and the German World War II bunkers is that these are made out of elements. You can see a couple of the elements just falling apart here. That is very, very typical. This one is completely filled with trash. So I think we're going to skip it and there's a million mosquitoes coming out of it. We're going to find another one, which I think is over there because I can see there's another mound. Let's see if we can have a look inside that one. There are some trenches in the area, which are merely just running trenches that you can jump down into and protect yourself if there were bomb raids coming in and splinters fly all over the place. And this forest is very quiet today. But during those days, in the 60s, 70s, 80s, it was very, very, very hectic here. There's another one. They are pretty awesome to be honest because they're nothing like the German stuff that we typically see but I think we have to see if we can sneak down into this one and have a look yeah I'm gonna see it's very very Ow. <laughs> there we go of course trash is everywhere <sighs> So now you are in a Cold War Russian bomb shelter. They could also have been storage for all I know. Fuel depots as well if they manage to get something in here. Nevertheless, I do think I see these attachments here, which I believe is for benches. So the half pipe type of bunker is something that you can see that the Germans created in the Second World War. Hundreds of them, thousands of them, Weltblech. They very often use a corrugated type of metal to create them in segments and then concrete here and there. Something is dear. Very crude little fixture. I haven't got a clue what that is. There seems to be some electronics there. Wow. All right, let's go and find more. This one looks a little bit more exciting, even though, of course, it's filled with all kinds of trash. But we have to check it out, don't we? Okay. How come there can be so much trash here? What the heck? What the heck? Someone filled the whole freaking place up with trash. 
insulation trash. Gotta be kidding me. We can't even go in there. Because I don't know whether that trash is something we really shouldn't be around. So I'm not gonna... Yeah, we have a little room here. It's a bit easier to get in here. This actually was a control room. So you can climb up there Where? to a tiny little control post. Do you want to go up? No, because I don't like all the stuff that I put here. That is just insanity. Shape up people, what the heck are you doing? It is insanity to see that someone actually does this. Oh my God. But at least, cool little bunker, this is something really, really cool. Right there, you have two Cold War aircraft shelters. They're still here. They're very, very large. Some of them are very intact. Some of them are converted to modern use, but we have two of them here and we're gonna have a peek. There's also one further over there. So we're gonna look at that also. But these are very, very interesting because this, was the epitome of the Cold War. Inside these huge shelters, the aircraft were ready 24 seven. They were ready to go out and do whatever needed. And also in this area, you're gonna see that me and Eagle Eyes found a former USSR or Soviet Cold War nuclear bunker storage. And that was amazing. It took us forever to find it, but we finally found it. And that's gonna be something that I hope you're gonna enjoy. You can see from the outside, you can see they have a huge mound of sand that was put after this construction. And these are constructed in two ways, either half uh, prefabricated uh, like horseshoe elements, or they could be done like this with the steel beams as an inner skeleton and then concrete and things on the top and in the end a sand as you can see here. Look at that skeleton there. Extremely big skeleton uh, beams in steel. And I think they created these very very quickly if they needed to. And I think there are about 10 of these shelters around here. And in the back there, there's a very special feature. We're not gonna venture in here either because this is a property that someone is using. So we're not gonna do that. But you can see up there, that's where the cables for the electronics were, the lights, all of that. And in the end, there's a very special feature. There's also, a feature to be able to start up the uh, engines and push out from here almost like full power to get it out quickly. From the side here, you can see it's like a mountain by itself. And here is one like mid section chamber that you can very often see they had for storages or generators. I don't know what year this thing was built, but it's basically, okay. Let me see if I can find my flashlight here. Yeah, all right. You see here, this is where they had the electronics. And they had this flat metal pieces where they clipped all the cables onto. So in a way, pretty efficient way to attach a lot of cables. Okay, so this is a room that had some kind of cables going through here. Because I can see that leads into the hall, at least it used to. A lot of mosquitoes here. And again, you can see the very special way to attach cables. First, put up a flat bar of metal, put these strips on, and then boom, you have your cables. And that is the switch that Ivan used to switch on when he came here in the morning and prepared the MIGs to go out on their sorties. <laughs> what about that first story, huh? And we have 
most likely just a second room here. Yeah, with something going through there. Fascinating. Did you know that you can become a World War II History Hunter team member and the artifacts here could be passed on to you in this manner and fashion here by creating beautiful World War II dioramas and displays, you can be the future keeper of something very, very special by the history and the history hunting that we share together. Check out the link in the video description, you can click that and you can become a patron team member if you want to. Different kind of perks with for your eyes only videos, travel vlogs, restoration projects, all of that good stuff and if you want to know more, check out the supporter videos in the beginning of each month but now let's continue our little adventure here you can see we're driving down the taxiway and this is where the trains oh sorry trains aircrafts would come up and down the taxiway to be ready to put onto the tarmac and then take off and land and there are a lot of these structures everywhere so we're gonna pay a little visit to some of the others here so we'll just drive a little bit further down into the area here I've lost count of how many there are now. I think this is the number eight, but there is a house in the forest here. And I do think there could have been some small foxholes and trenches. Maybe the Soviet soldiers, Ivan was here and they practiced here and they fought and trained here to be ready. But I see a lot of Strange things going on here. See that? That's a pedestal in concrete. I can see a huge pedestal in concrete there. And then there is this house here. Uh -huh. You know, they had a massive water supply and sewer system at this camp. It's gigantic. I've seen tubes like 40 centimeters in diameter. And I think this has something to do with that. I think this could have been like a uh, water pump station or something like that. Be, care be careful, be careful, guys. No, I think it is for water or something like that. They pump water from this place or stored water, I'm not sure. Seems like this thing here was placed once, maybe in the floor here or something. And you can see writing again. Hi. A lot of writing. There were some fixtures there on the wall. So, this little piece here, laying right there. Oh, actually has Russian writing on it. I don't know. Cold War. Sit in there. <laughs> Eagle eyes made a little smiley for you. Eyes and teeth. Um, I said I'll make some of you historical by giving us a little donation and I will. So I want to say a massive thank you to all of you on this list. I said I collect all the names. I'll put that name on the list and I carry that with me on the full journey here. And in this way, you are now historical. You told us that you wanted to help us out with a little donation. I promised I will do whatever I can to make you come kind of with us all the way. And this is our symbol of our appreciation of what you on that list helped us out to go out to the Eastern Front. So thank you each and every one of you. And look here, you are right here behind or in front of us. You're here looking at the past and we are really, really grateful for that. Thank you for the kind donations. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for your kind donations. Thank and you, you so much. have made this come this dream come true for this young man. And also for me as a dad. So thank you. I just saw one of these entrances here in this last one. And uh most definitely has a feature that the other ones doesn't have. Oh yeah. This is like a more advanced version with a bomb proof room or something. Steel walls and yeah, ton of equipment coming through here. Most definitely a much more important bunker than the others. 
because of all that you see here. And I wonder what was on this wall. Hmm. It does lead to into the bun uh, the aircraft bunker. It does that. I'm going to turn the camera so you can see here. You can see this place here. These are the ventilation shafts that we saw on the top. And it has this se separate room there on the side where you have uh, all kinds of things on the wall. So you can have a look inside there if you want to. Very, very different. Everywhere in the terrain, we see these pipes laying around. And some of them are really bent up and messed up. We also seen some electronic cables coming up and also some cables, uh, I mean hoses to fill up the aircraft, you know, like aircraft uh, fuel filling hoses. Maybe that was very volatile because we also find those are hazmat uh, boot, boots that we see at some of these locations where these bunkers are. And that is telling me that they did operate and handle some, some bad stuff here. I don't know about you, but to be able to come to a location like this, to know that the secret MiGs and the MiG pilots, they were here. And uh, we were very lucky once uh, a few years ago, we had the opportunity to actually be taken up into the air by a MiG pilot. So we've actually been landing on a tarmac of a former that type of uh, airfield. So, wow, it's just so exciting to be here. So, this is another of the test pits. And uh, it's incredible to see how much nature takes over here. You can see all the trees here, just digging into the tarmac and eating up more and more and more of the uh, structure. And in a few years, you cannot see that that was an engine test pit. This is the other type. And I'm very glad we could see that. This is the type where you also can actually see the doors. But I'm very curious about if the others had the doors. I'm not too sure about that. But here you can see the pre-made elements, which they kind of just screwed together. And here are the huge doors. I think the motors has been removed, but these massive doors are sitting on wheels. So you can see here, there's a huge wheel there and you can see the track. And there used to be some cables pulling back and forth, but some of them actually have a electrical motor running on the, the, uh, the thing itself. And you can see here, the other door from there. And it originally had a number 05. And also the camouflage paint is still highly, highly visible. But this thing here, is a totally different edition, as I said. And you can see that when you come in, you can see that it's pre-made concrete half circles. And all they do, they just bolt them together. So you have one piece coming up to there, joining together and another piece. And then it's just a point, a uh, matter of adding them and stacking them next to each other. So I think these are later versions. And up here, you can see Soviet sign. Wish I knew what it said. See that? And sometimes, not in too many of them anymore, but earlier, there were actually drawings of aircrafts. Uh, there were drawings of, uh, there were maps, small maps on the wall. So, but here you can see this, what I wanted to see. Um, this is just one exit, there is not two. So I think the MiG fighters or the smaller aircraft was here because the other ones, as you saw, had a dividing wall much wider and then it gives the jet stream out through two funnels. This one has only one. So that is the main difference. So I think these are smaller and they are for the uh, single engines uh, jet fighters. This one here is the one that I like the best. 
that's exactly what they used to look like when they were shot. The aircraft was ready. The tarmac here was clean. There was no sand or anything. They were very meticulous with that because they didn't want anything to be sucked up into the engines and everything. So you have to imagine a perfect smooth tarmac here. And then inside there was one of the MiG fighters ready. The strategic bombers were in the others. And suddenly, Ivan, he got a telegraph message or telegram message saying that, hey, something is happening here. Let's scramble these birds and let's get them up into the air now. What is special about this one is that if you take a very close look to the gate here, you can actually see a fighter wing kind of drawing there. Can you see that? To me, it looks like someone tried to show the profile of an aircraft and you see the stripes and then you see the Russian riding. That is very, very cool to see. And also you can see it still has its numbers. The, the doors are shut. That is very, very rare to see. And I wonder how long ago or what, at what exact moment did these doors shut for the very last time? I just wonder. And that is something that I love to do when I'm out here. I love to let my imagination run away. And I love to feel that there's a connection between the past, ourselves, and what happened here. Indeed, that's what it's all about, to go out and share great history together. If you want to help us out to reach more locations like this, you know, we have this little super thanks feature here. Basically, your opportunity to help us out to get some gasoline fuel into the camper van and then go out and find and share even more great history with all of you. So I hope you enjoyed that episode. Thank you so much for watching, subscribing, commenting. It is greatly, greatly appreciated. And if you want to find out more about becoming a Patreon supporter. There are links in the video description, also links for our PayPal if you'd like to help us out, as I said, to reach more locations. What is going on here? Well, me and Eagle Eyes, we are on a very special mission this year because we want to dig even more into some of the World War II aircraft history, and we're going to share that with you later. But our first very special project that we're going to do is all about a very very, very special German World War II aircraft, which is in a place which is hardly believable. <laughs> but we are working so hard to see if we can find that and share it with you. But until then, watch some more of our videos. You watch them in full. You're helping the algorithm to make us kind of be seen more. And in that way, we can reach more people and share more material. All right. Enough rambling. Thank you very much for being here. Hope you enjoyed this video. Until next time, please stay safe, keep smiling, and before you know it, we'll be out there sharing more fantastic World War II history.